On uh, Tooth and Nail, uh, of course, there was the issues with Tom, and I've heard everybody's side. Don said he liked working with Tom. Of course, George had his issues, and then Tom told me about what happened with that. But how was it working with Tom Worman? I love Tom Worman, and I loved working with him. The problem, I mean, yeah, and, and I thought Tom did great with, I mean, you know, George had his complaints, but to this day, George and I, when we're working, sometimes we'll say, you know what, Worman was right about certain things back then that we didn't listen to. So I gave Tom a lot of credit. The problem really occurred with Tom when we started doing vocals. Tom did the first two vocals with Don. I mean, I was there, but I was kind of more of a spectator. And they just did not communicate. They just didn't connect at all. And Tom came to me and said, you do the vocals. I think you'll work with him better. And so I did. And it did come out better. And we got some great results. I mean, Don sang fabulous on that record. And I was kind of the producer of, of the vocals in, in many ways. But that's a thing. I mean, I think it's it's a credit to a producer when he recognizes, up oh, this, is, this isn't working. And instead of backing out of the project altogether, he said, you, you take over. You do what you, what you seem to be capable of. And uh, that, that was a, a big shot of faith in me. But it worked out. And Don and I did have a good working chemistry, a really good working chemistry. And, you know, we got some great results. That's incredible. I didn't know that side of the story. So was uh, Tom still involved while you're cutting the vocals or is that after he departed? Did he leave at that point? No, he was he was still there, but he was usually up in the lounge. But that's OK, because that's how we got it done. And it worked. And do you recall any of those things that you're talking like about with George, where you're like, hey, Tom was right on that? Is there any example of oh, that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Talking about when the, when a guitar sound has too much distortion and it doesn't sound good recorded. He definitely had a point about that. And we should have listened. Because when I hear Tooth and Nail, it does sound funny to me. Not That's not all our fault and it's not all Tom Worman's fault or anything else. But uh, we got better at sounds on the next record, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, the production, of course. Yeah. That's the one thing with Tooth and Nail. But you look at the time period and it fits in with a lot of the production. You know, you listen to Shout at the Devil. It's kind of along those lines as far as production okay, wise. Same, same engineer. engineer. Yep, yeah. Jeff Workman. And yep. uh, so most of the record is done by the time Tom leaves. Yeah. Tom didn't leave till mixing. Yeah. He left before mixing because we, we did a mix with the band and Jeff Workman. It's funny because uh, I found those mixes not that long ago. It was really interesting to listen to how different it was. But we were not happy. And and going back, I some of the things Jeff Workman did really held up better than the record did. But we brought in Michael Wagner, who did an incredible job of mixing it with what he had to work with. He, he did a great job. And uh, that was when we really connected with Michael. Roy Thomas Baker oversaw the remixing. Right. Um, well, I mean, what's was, that role? I mean, what does that mean? Like he just, how did he, well, you know, go I, ahead. I mean, he, I think, you know, he had some ideas early on that the band kind of shut him down with. So he kind of said, well, okay, I'll stay out of it. Then I'll let you guys work with Wagner. I'll just kind of, he was also part of the record company. He was in with the record company. So he was sort of there to, I guess, babysit really the, the mix, but it came out great. Band and Michael Wagner worked great together and, and RTB knew how to kick back, you know, for like, okay, you don't dig my ideas cool. Let's go with what you're doing. And he let us do that, which I think is cool. Were you in the studio when the altercation went down between George and Tom? Yes, I was. And it was not as, I mean, it's, <laughs> yes, I absolutely was. And I'm partly responsible for it actually. Um, but yes, I was there. Uh, but, but what's your understanding of it? As far as what Tom said is that he was um, telling George, your solo on Tooth and Nail, that's brilliant. But this solo that you're working on, he didn't remember what song, but he was like, why don't you do something more along the lines of Tooth and Nail, where it's like a brilliant solo. And, and then George threw down his guitar and then he's, he said he hit the talk back button and was like, George, do you want to come in here and hit me or something along those lines? And and then he left the project. But he also mentioned, of course, that stuff that Jeff Workman was doing, said you guys were all editing some of his words that he'd say and then making it into, I guess, sexual stuff or funny shit. And, uh, right. And, that is true. But he and, said and he that's did. why I'm kind of responsible, because I was there with Workman when he edited all that stuff together. And really, that was the cause of the altercation. So, again, I, I kind of blame a little bit myself because I went along with all that. 
and then it was a practical joke, but it went horribly awry. Um, so yeah, it was, it was unfair to Tom because yeah, we edited Tom's words together, played it to George. And I mean, at the time I was thinking, God, you can hear the edits. We were doing it on cassettes. This is 1984. The edits were actually really obvious to me, but George believed them and then got pissed off at Worman and threw his guitar down. And, and yeah, that's, it, it was, it was very unfortunate and it was a bad thing, but somehow we pulled through and finished the record. Wow. So that almost sounds like you put his words together to say something critical of George. No, it was just what we did was bad. I mean, I hate to I hate to go into the details of it, but um, let's just say we made Tom sound bad. We made Tom out to be somebody that he's not, and that and that pissed off George because he was thinking he was somebody he's not, and that was uncool. I see. And so, do you recall that actual moment where he threw his guitar down, and that's all true? Yes. yes. Any more info on that? No, I mean I think I've kind of outlined it. As far as things that Tom brought to the table, are there other things that he brought as a producer that you look back or you took with well, you or anything? Yeah, I mean, when we did pre-production, he was great. I mean, we spent a couple of weeks in pre-production with him, and it was it was the old school thing. The producer sitting there with the notebook making notes while we're playing live in the room and then talking about it. And it was it was fabulous. I thought the pre-production went really well. And then when we went into the studio, we were all very spirited, and it was all very up. There was a great energy the first couple weeks. When we got into overdubbing, that's when it got into a problem, and um, the problem with Tom happened. The problem with Tom and Don happened. Uh, but it's not just George that the reason he left, but I think that was the final straw for sure. Are there any other standout moments from those studio sessions? Just a cool moment or something that you uh, reflect well, on? You know, I mean, my memory is, you know, I would go there and spend all day in the studio with the band. And then I would stay there all night with Jeff Workman. We were, of course, doing chemical you know, enhancements. But, uh, but it was a fabulous learning experience for me because Jeff Workman was, he was one of the mixers on Bohemian Rhapsody. The guy had phenomenal history, The Cars, Journey, so many great records. And I got to learn so much from him. And because I did always want to be a producer, I was like a sponge trying to learn from these guys. And I learned a lot from Jeff Workman. And I know he did a lot, even in the studio, a lot of drugs and drinking, which sometimes uh, some people I've talked to would be like, yeah, he'd be there the next day after staying up all night. And I know Tom. Tom's been very honest about his drug use and that he would even often do coke at the end of a session so they could get a new perspective. But as far as when you're recording, you guys were typically sober and it was that late time stuff where you'd partake or was it a full time job? Yeah, I know I didn't. I, I know I never partook until after the session. Um, and I, I'm not sure about the other guys. I mean, I think on the earlier days, like Tooth and Nail, yeah, I think everybody was pretty close to sober. I mean, Don always would drink when he would sing. I forget how much he was drinking, but I know I ne I would never do anything until afterwards because that's just, I just didn't like being unclear. And I never did a show high ever with Dokken. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that was, that was um, I'd say we were fairly good about that. It got worse later on. By Back for the Attack, anything goes, <laughs> you know, but not for me. Again, I know that even on Back for the Attack, I was very sober when I was doing my tracks. Wasn't sober afterwards, though, and I'm and I'm open about that. My drug use was pretty bad too. 